welcome to Vanessa and to Martin uh, from Dating. That how do you pronounce your name? Dating so, art, I say. It's that eagle art. That eagle art. We'll, we'll explain why why it's yeah. called like that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and it's wonderful to have you here. We're super excited to have you come talk to our first year students. Um, and uh, like I said, we met in, in last year yes. in your exhibition at Southwark when it was the full English, uh, which was a really cool experience. And I, before we had the students come on, I said to Vanessa and Martin, what a truly special experience it was just to get my way down to Southwark, find the space, and then walk in through the exhibition behind the scenes, so to speak, because we saw the paintings, the back of the paintings, the first thing we did. And then you were there and were so lovely. And I thought we needed to do something together. So here we are a year later, almost to the month. Yes. So very, very welcome. Yeah, very welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. And to everyone for being here. I mean, I feel it would be nice perhaps if we could introduce briefly our platform and ourselves, our background first, so you can all kind of get to know where we're coming from. And of course, we'll get into what Sophia was mentioning of the, of the exhibition, which she visited personally. Uh, so you can all get a feel of that as well. Um, so yeah, my, well, I'm Vanessa, and uh, you're Martin. <laughs> I'm Martin. Um, we um, we're London-based um, uh, curators and founders of uh, Dat Eagle Arts and Dat Eagle Studio, um, and uh, both of us are mixed uh, race. We're not uh, British uh, by birth uh, per se. So um, yeah, um, we. I come from a fashion background and, and you come from a graphic design background. I come from a graphic design and animation background. Uh, so that's kind of my field. That's why also, especially for me, this is a, a total honor, right? To, to be talking to you all guys. So in terms of like the launching of our platform, it's an art platform. So many of you might be thinking, if I did fashion design and, and Martin did graphic, how did we end up? In the, in the arts industry, curating art, which was a field that was very uh, separate to what we knew about. So when we came to London, well, we both had our jobs in, in our respective industries and um, we felt it was very demanding and it was very commercial and it was very, uh, not very exciting for us at the time. I mean, we were able to save up some, some money and w working and then we decided we wanted to do something quite exciting which we could grow. Uh, so it's, it's actually coming back to the roots of the roots. So I guess the art is the base of everything, right? Art is the base for dance, for theater, for music, for movies, photography, painting, sculpture, graphic design, or animation. I think everything comes from the arts. So we decided to get into the art and scene here in London and, and try to get, you know, to get to know the reasons why uh, things are happening like that, you know? So yeah, we started working at galleries and what we found was that we, we would write about art and we would never get to see or to meet the, real, the people, like the artists, they were either dead or they were very big. So we could never have like intimate conversations or really get to know what that vision was about. So that's when in our free time, we would start visiting artist studios um, in our own time and it, we would usually go to you know universities uh, first like last year students graduating and that's how our platform started so it start from very intimate one-to-one -one studio visits with artists where we started interviewing them and that grew into into our online platform which is an archive of interviews studio visits articles about emerging arts uh, what we found very initially visiting art schools was that um, even if these schools were very diverse um, in perspectives, mediums, there would be certain groups that would uh, join themselves together and uh, they, they really didn't mix. So we would see a lot of platforms 
only about female arts, which is, you know, fantastic. It's very needed. Or platforms only about digital art. But really, there was a, a sort of... Jag lägger in den i vår... There, there was, wasn't really a sort of platform which would have um, a safe space for everyone. So being Martin a male and me a female, we, from very early on, we wanted a platform that could be equally uh, diverse in genders, but also in mediums and also in backgrounds and in diversity. And so it could be like a safe space where we could showcase work of uh, very different people in a, in, in, together uh, from different voices. Uh, and that grew into curating as well. Yeah. I, I feel we should share our, our, mm -hmm. our... So we're gonna share the screen now to show you some stuff about us. So you get a better idea. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, we document our studio visit. We visit one artist per week and we document our studio visits with analog photography so what when Mart, Mart, martin is particularly in charge of of documenting the visits so it's basically a, a record or a diary of the conversation and i think that we're particularly interested in like the process and the intricacies of the behind the scenes just the feeling of the space or, or the person through the objects of the space what can those objects say about the work rather than the work itself so we always focus on like little surreal details which we can find in the space and you'll see the images have a sort of texture to it and they're very raw and very intimate and very personal we kind of avoid like the hyper curation of images that's running through instagram through our, through our feeds and kind of trying to display something quite personal um, and and quite honest to us um, so it's like a, an absent portrait of the artist uh, through through little details of of things around their space so you can get a, a little idea of the kind of images that we we are interested. This is like you know the de the desk where the person is working, even like the relationship between the hands and the work. Um, so all of these like little observations, we often go very very into detail. So we're very interested in close ups, and that can be quite uncomfortable to be honest uh, for for many people, but. Um, I feel like we, we like to tell stories through different close-ups um, so people can get their own narrative. If... Yeah, it's really important, you know, to get to know the artist as a person more than an artist. I think we think that to know somebody is, is very uh, necessary in order to get to know their work, their process and the final outcome. Yeah, so I guess it would be nice to introduce you to our exhibitions as well and the design process that comes through that. Um, so we can start with yeah. Preventive Tragedy. So, uh, yes. Well, we're going to show you the poster first. So this is like the graphic design done for the, for the show. Um, just so you get a sense of the exhibition, um, I'm going to open these files up. So this was one of our first uh, exhibitions that we were kind of very proud of. It was in, we work nomadically in spaces because we don't have a physical space. So this was in an industrial warehouse in Brixton and we invited every artist to come and make the work on site. And the title of the show was Prevent This Tragedy. And we never really revealed what the tragedy was about the show. Um, this site itself where the works were made was um, going to be uh, demolished and new buildings were going to be made there. So uh, of course that was a tragedy in itself, the space, you know, the demolition of the space and how that reflected, you know, the housing industry or, or any other things, but it, it really delved into many other different tragedies. The show was very material based, it was very sculptural, it was also very like performative, um, this work itself, it was a concrete wall uh, an artist made. As you can see, um, 
like the wall was made to be the exact size of the door adjacent to the wall. So everyone worked with the architecture of the space to, to make the works. And this wall was um, decaying throughout the exhibitions period. So it was like a live video work where you could see the concrete demolishing and you can see the drops here uh, like falling apart. So, you know, something that's so, um, a strong like concrete where you know we all live in houses of concrete how this artist has managed to to make that material so fragile and you know it just shows like uh, you know un un instability in, in different levels so the the show was very kind of like tragic material very minimalist very sculptural and at the time to make the design decisions, I'm sure Martin can tell you a bit more about how we intended to reflect these themes into like a, a design aesthetics. So uh, yeah, for the graphic design on the visual identity, we were pretty sure that we wanted something quite simple, right? Quite minimalist. And what's more simple and minimalist that the white color, right? So we kind of focus as well on, on the typography, which is uh, this one. We work with the type designer uh, back in the day. We developed the type together. Uh, so it was kind of simple, but also with a lot of personality and character as well, right? And, you know, this other typography here and here and here, the rest of it is our typography, which is the one that we use in that field all the time. So that's our identity. And we usually, for every show, we usually work with a type designer to work on the type for the title. Then the rest of the text is always uh, our type, which is called folio. So there's this conception in art of like following a linear narrative and usually galleries have like templates and they use uh, all, all over throughout their career. But we're really interested in like marketing and, and how each show should have the, its own identity that reflects the show. So in this particular case, the tragedy or the word tragedy was so strong that we felt there was no image really needed to describe like the, the strength of the word itself and the beauty of like prevent this tragedy. No one knows the tragedy. Can it be prevented? Uh, you know, it, it was very mysterious as well. Yeah. Also in the press release, which is the image that you can see on the left, we we really loved like just blocking the text with the title, you know, it, it created like a disruption. And also, as you can see, everything was very geometrical. It was all based on um, columns um, and like divisions, which kind of imitated the, the works on view. We also like we created a map, which was the same order as you physically would walk in, in the space. Uh, so, you know, all of those things were like translations of the physical experience. Um, the set route to view the works and yeah the beauty of like the title and yeah we didn't feel it needed any image or any color to you know it would it would make it less strong if we were decorated with with other elements um, we also did some um, how do you call it uh, panels on the on the door so you can kind of get to see and again, following the same identity, but what was interesting is that we created them in the same size of the door uh, of the entry of the space. So here you can just see. So it's like an extension of the architecture of the site, uh, you know, all of like these very considered decisions. It was very sculptural. We didn't feel we had to put a vinyl on, on the wall because it wasn't a very a, a flat exhibition it was a very sculptural one well yeah we must say here in london everybody does the same thing which is putting just a sticker to vinyl on the wall and that's all which is pretty cool you know but we want to step out of that right to step out of the comfort zone and trying to create something more excited than just a sticker on the wall and then we also did a book, which is this one. And so the design decisions for this book, I mean, with, with our identity with that eagle art, it's a yellow color. So we felt like our first book should occupy this yellow um, identity, but also it, ref it was an extension of one of the works on view in the show, which I'm, I'm just going to show you um, Evie's work. Um, I don't know where it is. Um, let me just show you one second. 
So here you can see this big rock which has a, a band on top of it putting it together and we just really like the beauty of uh, you know this huge rock being precariously held together by this very thin neon uh, touch of color so at the time to design the book we thought um, it would be a very like interesting detail to incorporate like a band that would hold this piece together so the book was like all um, loose sheets of different things it had like a poster it had like a press release a poem postcards so everything was loose and it was only um, tied together with this band so it was kind of very precariously tied in together holding it together which it was very sculpturally made it more of an object um, so yeah that, that was part of the design decisions that re re really reacted to the exhibition i think i think something very important is the fact that uh people love free stuff right we all like free things uh, i personally like stickers for example other people like just to prefer list the paper and you know the price for the book wasn't that high but we were pretty sure that we wanted to give something more than just a book. So that's why we, we attached this whole thing, right? Like two postcards, a few stickers inside the book, um, a poster, which is that one over there. Yeah, and also if you can see here, these lines dividing. So again, it was the element of physicality. So this was actually a post, two postcards. So you could physically tear the page apart. So again, like the physical material decisions from the exhibition, we really considered it at the time of someone like breaking the book apart. You know, it's another tragedy in itself, breaking something which we've done. And, and which we've taken so much time doing. And in terms of like accessibility and equality with, with every artist in the show, um, as you can see, like the front cover of the book, it was all details of the work. We didn't want to reveal the, the whole work, what it was. We just wanted to show little hints of what could it be and like focusing on the materials. So we chose one detail of the material of each artist because we didn't want one artist to be more important than another artist. And of course, in this show, there were artists that were quite big, like Simon Callery. He's in the Tate collection next to other artists which were recently graduating. So putting all of these people in the same level, you know, in the same size, uh, the same little detail of the work, it, it just meant uh, another level of accessibility and, you know, um, equality within, within the group show. Yes. But um, let's let's hop on to another show so, so you can all get to see a different perspective for, for another recent exhibition. So, uh, yeah. This was Dark Air. It happened like six or seven months okay. ago. It was actually happening during the heat wave here, here in London, which, which was pretty crazy because people here is not, you know, used to just 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 the heat right so everybody was getting crazy and it was actually very challenging because this gallery space in particular was extremely warm and we really, obviously there's no ac here in in london or even england so it was a real challenge for people to come by and see the show because it was so hot outside and nobody was really going into uh, a hell of a gallery right so th this was like our first sh solo show ever the, the previous show we showed you was a group exhibition so we were very conscious that we didn't want a male or a female to be our first solo show and you know define our practice so this was the work of a non-binary artist in transition and it's a site-specific work we got funding from the government of england to be able to commission this piece and we thought how interesting it would be that our first solo show would just consist of one big work which is so ironic because you would think you would want to put so many things and show everything together and we thought it would be quite strong just to focus on one huge piece so this was a mix of a sphinx and a scorpion both of these mythological creatures are uh, guardians in their mythology so one is like a guardian of a city in Tevez and the other one is the guardian to the passage of the sun and so we, we, we treated it as the guardian of the space 
Uh, as you can see, it's blocking the entrance to the space. So this was very performative because in, people, in order to access the space, they had to jump through the guardian. Uh, you know, usually there's this performance when viewing art where you can't touch works, where you, you're removed from the actual um, display. But we wanted to invite people to touch it, to go through it. You had to jump it to access it. So that involved a level of like performative actions, bodily actions, of going through this piece um, because it was bigger than life, you know? And the other ironic thing about the guardian was that usually guardians guard something else, but here the guardian was the work. There was nothing else that he was guarding or she was guarding. So we thought that was quite ironic. Um, the, the actual textile and materials were all referred to like uh, masculinity, like motorcycle, leathers, it also referred to Americana because the artist was an uh, American artist. Well, they're American. Yeah. yeah, American artist. So it's all patched work and together. And it also feels like a creature, um, you know, from the football uh, stadiums that's just in the middle of, of a match of a, you know, a basketball or like baseball matches. Yeah, like a mascot. Like a mascot, exactly. So with that, we came up with the concept of the scarves which you might want to introduce. Yeah, so uh, thankfully, because we were funded for this show, we had kind of a lot of money to work with. Uh, we are very used to work with our money based on collaborations and support between creatives. So in this case, we had the opportunity to uh, create this collaboration within, between the artists, which is Gray Welebinski and us as that Eagle Art and that Eagle Studio. Also, as a third party, the gallery was collaborating too. So we, because the artist is really into sports, uh, particularly uh, football, basketball, a lot, tennis, uh, we were like, what's the merge, right, for this kind of sports and, and like a universal sort of object to support your team, whatever sort of sport is, is a scarf. You have flags, you have uh, football t-shirts, and you have also scarves and caps. So we decided to go with scars because this year was also like the female uh, World Cup. So uh, obviously uh, USA won the World Cup and the artist is American. So you can imagine they were like super extremely happy because of everything. So it was a great opportunity for us to collaborate in something very physical. In the previous occasion, we did the book. For this occasion with, with the, the scarves. scarves. In this case, the scarf is a limited edition. It was a limited edition of 50 scarves. They were signed and numbered by the artist. So what this means is that it's a double side object. So you can have it as a piece of work, as an edition, but you can also wear it in winter. Okay. So it's it's more also like a fashion sort of type of item which in the fashion world right now is quite trendy, right? This connection between sports and high fashion, uh, sportwear, we were was also, also something really important very for conscious us. that, you know, people couldn't access the, the work itself. It, it wasn't viable, it's like a huge monster. So we wanted people to take a memory of the experience. And we thought it would be quite funny to sell these in the opening night and that everyone was wearing them as you can see in the picture. And it created this sort of ritual or mythology, ritualistic experience around the creature, like a support system. And it, it digged into ideas of spectatorship or even worship when you go to churches or even when you go to concerts, you've got the illegal merch stand that in the outside of the concert. So we were thinking about all of these ideas with the artists and the colors that we chose were stereotypically gendered. So of course the pink and the blue referring to ideas of gender and identity that the, the artists explored in the work and that were um, patchwork in, in the actual work. Um, so here, yes, you can see some images and maybe you want to show the animation that we also did. Obviously the design of the scar was made 50-50 uh, between the artists and us, but it was super connected to the visual identity of the whole exhibition, right? So in this case, we work with one of our favorite designers in the world, which is Kalum. Um, he uh, worked with Vivian Hoffman, which is a type designer from, from Germany. Both of them developed this uh, type for darker, which we totally love. And it also represents so much the show, I don't know, for some reason. 
And as you can see, the rest of the, of the type is, or type as I was saying before, folio. So uh, for the animation, we wanted to do something very hybrid, right? Between what's a female, what's a male, the blue and the pink, also this smoke in the back, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a dark air. And I quite enjoy, you know, all these loops around the poster and the fact that you can see it from different time, from different aspects and different points of view. It's super playful. It's uh, kind of lovely as well. It imitated the route in the space where you would move and jump around. So it, it kept looping. And, and as Martin was saying, how do you reflect dark air in a graphic? So we really wanted to push like the smoke effect. And the reason, you know, people would see this and perhaps they would think the show was going to be full of dark air. But what was actually full of air was the creature itself, which was uh, made with air. So uh, it was a connotation, you know, how, how can you reflect something without giving everything away, um, yeah. uh, but still relating to it. Um, I feel like it would be nice to introduce full English before we wrap it up. Um, yeah. Uh, because it's the show that Sophia came to uh, and, and our, our most recent exhibition as well, the one which we feel most connected with. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I'm sure you're aware of the political situation here in the UK with Brexit and all of that. So, as, as I mentioned before, Martin and me are not English. Um, well, we are not fu like fully English or English at all. So we thought it would be quite humorous to, to do an exhibition titled Full English and to, uh, particularly us not coming from that perspective and being able to reflect, invite artists uh, who could, who could consider the national culture, particularly in these very weird transitioning times and maybe what that meant to them. So we invited artists that were English by birth, English by marriage, perhaps they were English by papers or perhaps they were not even English, but they had experience of what English is for them. So it, we really considered diversity at the time of curating the works it, it mixed one abstract figurative, abstract figurative. Um, so all of the works were made uh, for the space. As you can see, they were in the limits of the space. Uh, so it followed the architecture of the, of the space. And you would access through the back, walk through the whole back in order to get to the front. So that links back to our ideas of our platform and revealing the behind the scenes, the works in progress, things that you know in the art world it's just the final product we were able to show the process of making things and it was just so interesting to think about technicalities like the tunnel that it created you know we were thinking do we light the tunnel do we add lights in the back or do we just let light the front of the works um you know what do we give more importance to at the end we decided to do um different colored lights yeah so basically we mixed uh, white lights and warm ones and then we were like focus them in each of the works and different sections inside each uh, painting because this combination uh, created a better ambient a better environment for for the whole exhibition and besides that we also installed the lights ourselves we painted the whole floor we painted the whole walls we painted even the ceiling so as I was saying before, uh, in this show, for example, we didn't have funding from the government, but thankfully we have funding from a really good friend of us, which was uh, the promoter of this show, which is this guy here, Richie Culver. He's, uh, he's an artist and he had this idea for a long time of doing something British, something quite English, but not like in a nationalist way, let's say, but more like a welcome way to everyone. So thanks to him, we. We, you know, he came to our studio, we start chatting, we start development of projects, and, and this is kind of the final result. Basically, what we created was like a wall or a stage in the space, and that stage also forms like the setup for a set of performances that we did in the space. It was very performative. And going back to the idea of the lights and the tunnel, as you can see in the reflections, um, at the end, we didn't lit the tunnel because we thought it would be quite a nice experience to, to walk through the dark and get into the light. But you can see that it was naturally lit. So we left gaps in between the works so that the light could come through and it would create this very like geometric um, pa passage that, you know, you, you could see your way in and walk in. 
and of course when you when you turned you were confronted to like the works um, and in terms of like the identity uh, that we developed um, for that um, show yes we worked with a designer called um, Aaron Daniels so we were thinking a lot about like political propaganda and how they were always like delaying Brexit and things like that so we wanted to show this process of um, countdown I don't know if you can show the countdown yeah this is more like like the marketing side of of the show right uh, which was how to how to promote the exhibition so we decided to create this countdown like for a month from the day 30 to the day one so it was something like uh, uh, 30 days left 22 days left in terms of like a countdown basically and as I was saying before animation is something quite important for us so we did this mix between a particular animation for each artist introducing to artists but also introducing how many days were left for the opening of the exhibition. So this is more like the promotion and marketing side of it, which was quite successful in Instagram. It makes us uh, have a lot of traffic, you know, in terms of views and likes, which is always something that, you know, to keep in mind. And also it kind of made a blockage with, with everything else. So we were really focusing on this kind of very propagandish way of showing a, a countdown uh, as if it were like a political thing or something like that. And, and in terms of like the palette chosen, we did get elements of what a traditional full English would be like, you know, eggs, uh, orange, and then pink bacon and then uh, elements of the of the flag as well but we didn't want to be too obvious the the actual um design as you can see there's types from different um different types so uh, the reason we wanted not to have the same type for the title was because we wanted to show the variety within our full english it wasn't a a, a typical english uh, you know show it was people that weren't even English were part of it. So we wanted the, type, the types to be very diverse. And also you can see this effect of a plate doubling. So the plate relates to like the plate of food of a full English breakfast. And then when it divides, we wanted to show like the double effect, the dualities, the front and the back, the yin and the yang. There's always two versions of the story. And that was reflected in the show as well with the front and the back of the works. Um, so yeah, that was like a little playful. I reckon, I reckon this, uh, this visual identity for this exhibition, it's been so far the most representative of the exhibition. Most of the times we are like, we don't really care if the visual identity represents the show because there is no need to. But in this case, it happened like that and, and we started to see a lot of references to show. And, and to the English culture. And also like, also like very playful and very graphic -y, um, you know, and not so serious as, as perhaps this concept could be interpreted. So this kind of gave the, f this was the press release of the text and it gave the effect of a smash, like an egg smashing into the paper or something like that. It's very cartoony. And um, even um, like, I feel like there's a one image, um, there's someone hugging someone else. Yeah, there's, and it feels like a smash. It's super cartoony. Like if you're, um, how do you say, um, with, gu with the guns and in a cartoon, uh, and then you get this effect of a smash or a blood, like a bang or something. Bang. So we, we, we always like to add these little touches of humor or playfulness with the design. And also, you know, see how people, uh, grab these things in the space, uh, you know, how they take them away. Um, for instance, for dark hair, which I didn't mention, it, the big, big um, mythological creature, the actual text that people would take away was larger than life as well. It was a huge, huge text imitating the size of the work in the space as well. So we really consider that. We really take always in mind how to stay out of the comfort zone in terms of like the physicality of what we do. You know, the printing, the ink, the type of paper, uh, everything is super important at the time of, you know, having a final product. And then we also added these little images that every artist would give us um, in the actual press release. And it was like a very kind of nostalgic, um, you know, tinted view of the past. Uh, we, we added these very uh, simple uh, filters onto each image. Um, 
yeah which would also link to the to the identity of the show and then we also had this uh tiny uh what's the name for this panels panel uh representing the poster of the exhibition but also the poster of the events which we did a performance marathon uh, for the whole day uh, from nine to six each of these performers were doing a performance of, of an hour so it was non-stop so yeah i mean it's 10 37 i don't know sophia how we're doing with time if you want us to expand on something in particular Oh, sorry. Um, I need to find myself. Where am I? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I think it's amazing. I can't say that I would want you to ever stop because this is so exciting. <laughs> but maybe we should... Maybe if you just uh, stop sharing screen, we can see each other again. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Shall I... Shall we... I stop this?